right, good afternoon. Welcome to 1 p.m. on Tuesday, March 31st. Um, just want to go ahead and walk through uh, the setup for Smart Music a little bit here. Um, I showed this off a little bit on our Office Hour stream today for the 31st. If you want to check it out there, you can. Um, I'll go into a little bit about how it works once we do set up basic tutorial. But um, Smart Music is a cool program that normally costs a lot of money, but is free right now until the end of June. So we get to kind of enjoy this. And uh, the cool thing about Smart Music is you can practice with it and it will tell you if you're right, if you're wrong, has a lot of tools to help you get better. Um, since we really can't be in a room with me right now, this is kind of the next best thing. You can have your robot overlords help you get better at your instrument. Um, so once you're on the smartmusic.com main page, um, this kind of works like Remind. You can go to Login. You can click on New Smart Music it doesn't really matter. Um, once you're here, you can go ahead and put in your student email and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, never mind that. Once you're here, you go down to the bottom and you click on I'm a student because right now you're a student. You need to join a class. You don't have a login yet. All right. Once you're here, you can put in your student email and then your class code, right? And right now I'll post those in uh, Canvas shortly when I am done. Um, but if I go to my version of Smart Music, I can pull up your class code, like Remind or like anything else, and paste that over to you. So you can see and join whatever class you belong in. All right. This is the beginning band code, just by the way. All right. I cannot make a second account right now because I've already got myself logged in. I'm not going to make a, a dummy account for this purpose. But once you cr you know find your class, it'll say, hey, you're joining you know, a beginning band with Mr. Sergeant. And you can click hit, hit accept, and then it'll take you to a, a login screen where you can make your, um, you know, uh, your email or you set your email address, set your password, kind of make your account, um, and do all that basic uh, setup stuff. All right. Once you get yourself logged in, you'll come to a screen that looks kind of like this. This is my screen and what kind of mine looks like. Um, the important thing going forward is you may already see like on your page, some assignments popped up. I made a couple of like dummy ones just to kind of test and see how the system worked for myself. You don't have to do those. Um, I did go ahead and I, I put stuff that you guys are already playing in class, thankfully. So like, hey, beginners, uh, Furioso's here for you as an assignment, quote unquote. You know, some, some, uh, Silvergate for Symphonic and the Corral from Jupiter and I think Rampage both for Wind Ensemble. Um, what you can play around this week once you have your account set up are these tiles over here. All right, so we have method books first. Now, beginners and even older folks, the beginning band method book I use is not on here. It's old. No one actually uses it anymore as far as like, you know, a digital resource. Um, but there's a lot of great ones on here. So if you want some supplementary material to kind of look at, you know, the same info presented different ways. I'll tell you the, the common ones that I've used before that I like a lot. The Accident and Achievement Book 1 and 2 are both pretty good. Um, even, you know, older kids, Symphonic Band, Wind Ensemble, Jazz Band folks, go into Book 2 and start, you know, Exercise 1 and start jumping around until you kind of find stuff that starts to challenge you. These Book 2s are meant for second and even third year band classes. Um, so we have, like, the Accident and Achievement Books, the one I use a lot that I liked before. I came down to Florida Essential Elements for Band. Book one is kind of the beginning band book, and book two is the more advanced band book. So even, again, symphonic band with ensemble folks looking for good sight reading material, looking for good, just kind of like, uh, here's a new concept that we've probably already covered at some point, but presented as part of a method book. Really good ways to kind of go through and check it out. So let's just kind of go ahead and pick. We'll go to book one here. We'll go to a random assignment. You guys can do this too. So if you go to that same tile, you come and find essential elements, you have kind of the same options here I have more or less. Um, we'll set it to be a trumpet for right now because why not? And then you can basically pick the exercise you want. So this is like very much book one. Here's some hot cross buns. Getting pretty excited. Once you have that, you should be able to click open and it will start loading up. Now... Up here, you have some different controls. We'll cover that in a second. Um, but you can see the music right here. It's your first three notes you guys learned in beginning band once upon a time, with rest included, kind of written here for you. Um, if you click the, uh, again, sliders up here, you can change how loud the backing track is. You can change how loud your part is. If you want to hear the trumpet part before you try and play it, great chance to turn that up and turn this down all the way and hear what it sounds like. Now, if I start to turn the slider up a little bit, it's got some backing tracks to play along with. So 
So there's some real jams on here. If you want it to be a little bit faster, because that's baby speed, and you want to work at you know 120 instead, which is a little bit more, got a little more groove to it. By all means, turn the tempo up, and it'll go quite a bit faster. Okay, now the cool thing about this, and the reason why I'm showing it to you, and the reason why I'm saying it can kind of teach you some stuff, there's a couple options you have. One is, let's say you're playing, like, French horn, you're having trouble finding out, you know, hey, what's this note? I want to try and match this note, or, um, hey, this note on trumpet's really high, I want to hear that note by itself. Well, if you click on any of the notes, you get a couple options, one of which is play the note for me. Let me hear what it sounds like, right? Hey, it's a higher note. Okay, here's the lower note. Okay, so you can kind of play and match from there. Um, the second option you have is this, where you can actually click a note and see the fingerings for it, which is kind of a neat thing. Um, so we have, again, um, a couple tools that are built in there for you that you can use and um, you know have at your disposal uh, going forward, especially for stuff that you haven't seen before with me yet. If you go really far in like the end of the book one exercise as beginners, you're going to see stuff that we haven't covered yet, but it's a lot of stuff that, again, it, hey, here's a new note. I don't know what it is. Well... It'll show you what it is, which is kind of a cool thing. So the most important part of this program is this button right here. So it looks like a little record button. If I click this, it is now going to have me play. I'm going to turn this part down. It's now going to have me play, and it's going to actually tell me when I'm playing stuff correctly or not. So let me turn these sliders a little bit, turn the tempo down slightly. It's going to ask you to do a little... Um, you know, sound check. If you're using your laptop and you have like your, um, you know, built-in microphone turned on, this should work without having to, you know, mess around with any settings or anything. If I just press test microphone, it'll play a tune, uh, play a tone, and as long as your computer mic can hear that, you're fine. So it heard my computer make that little buzzy sound, that little bleep sound, and now it's good to go. So I'll pick up my trumpet real quick, and I'm going to play quietly and probably not that well because my uh, neighbor doesn't like uh, loud noises during the middle of the workday. Turns out. It'll click me off. So I'm all right so far, right? Now I'm not playing anymore. It's starting to show that my notes are not correct, right? Yellow just means that rhythm is off. Red means that you didn't play it or you played a wrong note. Okay, so I had the first two notes right. I came in a little bit late to note three. And then from there, I came a little bit early to note four. Then I started talking and obviously not playing the right notes. If I do it again, you can just run it again. That time, I actually played some wrong notes, and it knows what wrong note I was playing. I played E there instead of C, and it says, oh shoot, you played the wrong note which is great. So obviously if you're sitting there playing through it and you see a lot of red notes, okay, why is this wrong? Okay, what note did I think I was playing? I thought I was playing it all, oh, but it's C, it's open fingering. So it's kind of a cool thing to uh, be able to double check yourself a little bit um, and just make sure that you're playing the right stuff. And again, if you're not sure what's wrong, it can kind of help you hopefully diagnose what is wrong. Um, again, older folks, um, again, this is, this is the, you know, book one. Um, if I go back to my homepage, If I go to, oh, wrong button there, sorry. If I go to the method books again, if I go to Essential Elements book two, we'll pick another random exercise out of here. Let's go for trumpet again, because I have that handy. And I go all the way down to, let's go to triplet study, sure. I'm just picking random ones here. So if you go through the book, if you don't know something, go back to you, find where it teaches it to you. All right, well, here's one that's probably a challenge for my older kids too. Right, so book two is kind of meant for that, you know, uh, advanced seventh grade, eighth grade players played for two or three years can work on some concepts that we haven't covered a whole lot or that we just haven't seen in our actual literature, but the book has it as well. And they're pretty short, kind of bite-sized exercises. Hey, what's it sound like? Hey, well, guess what? Cheat, you can totally find out what it sounds like. Again, my advice is turn accompaniment down. It's always really loud. And turn my part on as you practice that first time. So you can hear it. Hey, what's that note? I don't know it. It's, I haven't learned that note yet. I'm panicking. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Click on it. Hey, it's high D sharp slash high E flat second valve. So some pretty cool ways to kind of see and double check yourself. Hey, what's this? Oh, it's D with a weird thing in front of it. Oh, it's just D natural. It's first valve. 
All right, so we have some stuff for the older folks as well. Good thing to go. I mean, by all means, go open that book up and go extra at a time and just pass the whole book off if you get bored. Um, finally, this yellow tab is actually the music. So some of you guys already have some in assignments, but let's pull up uh, when Ensemble is looking at a piece called Rampage before we went on this long break. If I pull up Rampage and I pull up the trumpet part again, I can play first or second, doesn't matter which. Hit open. The cool thing about the music is here's the entire piece over the course of one or two pages. In some cases, it's more than one, obviously, because some parts are going to be two or three pages long. This piece is not short. And you can also sit there and when you press play, you don't just get like the, you know, kind of dopey background music. You actually get the full piece of music playing in the background. It also helps you count rest even. That's cool. Five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four. Again, as your part comes in, you may want to turn this down a little bit so you can hear the trumpet part. We get the idea. If you want to start and practice right here and skip all the rest, we'll click where you want to start. It'll start you on that beat or on that note exactly. So if I want to start here and double check myself, I'll play a note wrong on purpose and you'll be able to see hopefully why in a second, especially my older kids who really know how the keys work. If I press record right here, Cool. So the problem was, besides those notes not sounding good because I'm trying to play soft right now. Hey, I played an F natural there. Hey, but the key says play F sharp. So it's marking it wrong because it is wrong. I should play second valve F sharp now. I roll it back and I start there again. Now it's marking it correctly because I did play F sharp, second valve, right? I didn't miss it that time. So we have some uh, some options here as far as, you know, uh, some good ways to practice it. If it's too fast, 170 is crazy fast, hey, just turn it down. Go to like 130. See how that feels. Go back and start in the same place. It'll match whatever tempo you want. Because some of y'all have some really fast licks like in flute and clarinet land, so it's kind of important to, hey, let's slow it down to, you know, let's go at 100. Let's go at 105, 110, 115. Speed it up slowly over time. As you get working on it, it'll get easier, obviously, the more you do it and the more you rep it correctly. Don't play it so fast you're playing it wrong. Cool. So uh, that is my quick smart music walkthrough. Um, again, so biggest thing is check today. I'm making the announcements right now as far as how to set it up. And by that, I mean I'm going to put a link to this video and put your class codes in for each class. So beginning band, I'll put your class code in your class's announcements. You know, uh, symphonic band, I'll put your class code in that one. Wind Ensemble, you'll have your class code. We cannot do a jazz one because you can only be in like one class at a time, quote unquote. But jazz band folks, there's jazz books on there. There's jazz pieces on there too. So you guys can do a little bit of um, self-discovery and uh, find some stuff to work on. So if you are already tired of playing, you you know, two or three spring concert pieces and don't want to work out of the book and you've done your scales and you're looking for something kind of fun and different by all means go on here and just go down the rabbit hole there is so much stuff it is unbelievable um, so again if you're that kind of go-getter smart kid who just wants to start clicking around and just kind of seeing okay let's look for solos for let's see flute and just, man, here's a bunch of them. Difficulty over here. Most of my second and third year players may want to look in that yellow category, but green is also. The green category can be pretty tough as well. Beginners want to stick to green. You can sort by difficulty. There's a beginning band one. Here's a very easy couple ones. So you have some different options here for filters to make it easy as well. So by all means, click around. Check out some of the other method books. Again, Accident Achievement. And essential elements are ones I both uh, like a lot. Um, Tradition of Excellence is also quite good. There's some clarinet explicit ones. There's some trumpet explicit ones. There's ones for every instrument, basically. 
Um, you got all your band and orchestra music here. You got some sight reading practice it'll do with you live. You got improv practice. You got small group stuff. Um, so you got a ton of different options here, y'all. So um, hope this helped with setup. Um, if you have any questions, um, check out uh, office hours tomorrow. Um, and by that I mean uh, on April 1st. So I'll be going live. If you guys want me to walk through any of this with you again or take it slow and kind of show it to you, you know, by all means stop in there and ask. And I'll do more of these videos as needed if uh, people have, exp you know, um, specific questions if they keep coming up from everybody hey if i went over something too fast i'll do a couple more videos and slow it down so uh thanks for watching hope your uh, quarantine is going well and we'll check in with y'all later bye